This is problem 7 of the exam review worksheet. It comes from chapter 6 and we have a second order circuit that we need to uh, give some information for. So we have a resistor, inductor, and a capacitor and you can tell that at time t equals 0 when the switch is thrown they will be in series and we first need to find the value of C in order for IL of T to exhibit a critically damped response and then we need to provide an expression for IL of T and then we're going to plot its waveform for T greater than or equal to zero. So first to determine if it is going to be um, critically damped, over damped, or under damped we look at this variable called alpha and alpha it depends on whether it is a series RLC or a parallel R RLC so for a series RLC alpha equals R over 2L and for a parallel RLC alpha equals 1 over 2RC. Now um, we also have omega naught which is 1 over the square root of LC. Alpha is called the damping coefficient and Omega naught is called the resonant frequency. So if alpha is greater than omega naught, then we have overdamped. If alpha is less than omega naught, then we have underdamped. And if alpha equals omega naught, we have critically damped. So we're supposed to find out the value of the uh, capacitor in order for us to have a for it to exhibit a critically damped response. So we need alpha to equal omega naught and this was a series RLC so we need R over 2L to equal 1 over the square root of LC and R over 2L so that's 1.2 over 2 times 0.1 equals 1 over the square root of 0.1 times C. Um, so this side is, let's see, so if we square both sides we end up with 36 equals 1 over 0.1 C and then we solve for C and we get C equals 5 eighteenths. Okay so um, now we know what C is and we can work the rest of our problem and we need to know for this kind of problem we need to know what IL at 0 minus and what VC at 0 minus is. So let's figure both of those out. So IL at 0 minus so at 0 minus um, it, we will have that the inductor is acting like a um, short circuit and the capacitor is acting 
like an open circuit. And since the capacitor is acting like an open circuit, there is no current flowing through the inductor. And there's no current flowing through the inductor, so IL at 0 minus equals 0. That also equals IL at 0 because the current through an inductor cannot change instantaneously. Now we want VC of 0 minus. And <clears throat> uh, VC of 0 minus, if we make this ground and we're looking for the voltage across this capacitor here, remember this is acting as an open circuit and the inductor is acting as a short circuit. And so the voltage here, everywhere here, is the same. So if I find the voltage here, then I will have found um, the voltage here. And if we make this zero, then that will be um, Vc. So V naught was 12. So we can do voltage division. So it'll be... Twelve times uh, we want the voltage. I mean the resistance for R two. R two is one point two over R one plus R two together is one point six. So Vc of 0 minus equals 12 times 1.2 divided by 1.6 is 3 fourths, so 12 times 3 fourths is 9. So Vc at 0 minus is 9 volts and that also equals Vc at 0 because voltage cannot change instantaneously across a capacitor. Okay, so um, now let's take our circuit and transform it from the time domain to the S domain. And we'll remember that um, inductors, so in the time domain we have an inductor and we'll say I is going this way and um, in the S domain we will have um, our current IL going this way and the voltage here is SL and the voltage here is L I of 0 minus. So in our end for our purposes, um, we don't have, I'm, I'm sorry, I said that was the voltage, uh, this, this is the voltage, um, SL is not the voltage, SL is the impedance, and for a resistor, a resistor has the same value in the S domain as it does in the time domain, and then a capacitor in the time domain looks like this with capacitance C and in the S domain oh and we'd have uh, we have IC going this way and in the S domain we we'll have IC going this way and our capacitor impedance becomes 1 over SC and then we have a voltage source that is Vc of 0 over S. 
Now, I didn't draw this clearly enough here. Let me get this a little better. So you can see that the polarities are reversed in these two. So we need to take our circuit, which at time t equals zero is only going to be this part, and transform it to the s domain. All right, so as we do that, the resistor keeps the same value. 1.2 and our inductor becomes SL. L is 0.1 Henry's so this will be 0.1 S And then our capacitor becomes 1 over SC. And then we also have a voltage source because we did have a voltage at time t equals 0. And so our voltage source plus minus is VC0 over S, VC0 over S, and so VC0 was 9 over S. Okay, so now we're going to use KVL to write an equation. So we've got um, a current, and that's what we're looking for is um, I L of T and I L of T we've got the same same current going everywhere so as we go around this loop um, we're just going to say that 1.2 so starting here 1.2 times I plus 0.1 S times I, so each of these is giving us a voltage, plus we want 1 over SC and 1 over um, 5 eighteenths is 18 fifths, so it'll be 18 over 5s. And then this last thing already, oh, times i. And then our, so all of these are voltages, so we're going around the loop, so we should have uh, the sum of all our voltages should be zero. This already is a voltage, so I don't multiply it times i. So I have plus 9 over S equals 0. Um, so now just make things look a little bit prettier, not much. I'm going to factor an I out of these first three terms and bring the 9 over S to the other side. So I have 1.2, well, I've got I on the outside because I'm factoring it out, I times 1.2 plus 0.1 S plus 18 over 5 S equals negative 9 over S. Okay, so now we need to get this into the kind of form that we'll be able to take the inverse Laplace transform of it because 
capital I is the Laplace transform of our current, and we'll need to take the inverse Laplace transform to get our actual current. And so we don't, we don't want it in this form. This will not be useful to us. We want our quadratic term to have a coefficient of 1, and we actually want this to be our quadratic term. We want to um, multiply through by s so we get rid of the s in the denominator, and we'll multiply through by 10s so that that point 1 will become a 1. So we're multiplying by 1 over point 1, s. So it's 1 over point 1 from this one and s from that one. Now 1 over point 1 is just 10, so I'm multiplying everything by 10s. And when I do that, I get i. So I'm going to multiply the 10 on the inside here, not on the outside. 12s. Uh, trying so hard to be careful. My s's and 5's look identical. 12s plus... 0.1, uh, nope, 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 we made that zero, plus 1 s squared, plus, now when we multiply this by 10, the 10 will cancel with the 5, we'll be left with 2, and 2 times 18 is 36, and uh, the s's will cancel. And on this side, the s's will also cancel, and so I'll have equals negative 90. Now, this is not in our usual order. Let's just, you know, make it look nice and put it in our usual order so we can see how to factor it. So s squared plus 12s plus 36. equals negative 90. So this factors nicely into s plus 6 squared. So I divide both sides by s plus 6 squared. And now I take the inverse Laplace transform of that um, to get our answer. And this is one you can look on the tables and find out this one is a pretty easy one. Um, if you have s plus 6 squared, so if you have uh, 1 over s plus 6 squared, let's take a look at that. And we're right here. So, um, n would be 1, so this would be t to the first, e to the 6t. So the inverse Laplace transform of this will give us i equals negative 90 t e to the negative 6t. And that's our answer. Um, now we're supposed to plot it, and while you would not have to do this on the exam, it's still a good idea to know how to do that, so we'll do that uh, and see what it looks like. Okay, so uh, let's say we want to go from time t equals 0 to time t equals 2. So I'll start with 0, and let's go by hundredths, 0.01. And then uh, to continue that, we'll just drag down. Until we get to 2. Alright, 
Uh, let's get rid of those extras. All right, so now uh, we want to put our function here in B, and our function was negative 90t e to the negative 6t, and t is going to be our value in column A. So to put uh, a function, you'll do equals, and then we want the value in column A, and then we want that times negative 90 times and we want e, so e would be exp, negative 6 times t, which would be the value in the first column. And that now has the formula, so we can drag that formula down. All right, so now uh, we want to take a look at it. So I'll select these two columns. And then on this version of Excel, let's see, we'll go to Charts. It'll be different on all the different versions, but you have to find it somewhere. I'll have a scatter plot and a marked scatter. And there we have it. So that's our function. And that is problem seven from the exam review worksheet.